So hi, John. Hi. Uh, we're here on the, the your your synth design uh, booth, and you've got a new version of the Solaris, right? Yes. So I can see, obviously, that it doesn't have a keyboard. Doesn't have a keyboard. Doesn't have a ribbon or joystick or wheels because you can do all that with other controllers. Uh, so for our viewers who don't know what the Solaris is, um, could you just briefly explain what, what the synthesizer sure. is? Sure. Yeah, well, the Solaris is an all-digital synthesizer using mathematical emulations of a variety of oscillators, uh, types, and filter types. And these models are d based on all of the traditional older synths now of the variety from Minimoog, Prophet 5 days, Wave, uh, Waldorf Wavetable and Sample Playback and Minimoog and Oberheim, you know, all of the kind of standards. And those models are all incorporated within this instrument digitally. And we have uh, quite a few of those. So, uh, so when was the original uh, Solaris released? We shipped in 2011. Okay, so... But the first show was 2007? A long time ago and it's quite interesting to me and and a number of my fellow manufacturer friends they say you're still selling you're still able to sell this after so many years so it's I think a real testament to the the my two primary uh, focus my foci <laughs> was a high quality sound and a good user interface so it seems to still stand the test of time, stand the test of time yeah so the only thing is uh, the tabletop just uh, upgraded with now OLED displays instead of the LCDs that we had on the older one. So it's a lot clearer. Um, and it's much smaller, I think, than a lot of people expected. I did a photo online early on, and I shot it from the side. So it made it look like it was huge. But uh, it's... Uh, 34 inches long, so I don't know what that is in your speak. So, but um, yeah, basically the same instrument, uh, same quality sound, and I stayed with a full user interface. Instead of trying to reduce it to uh, something even smaller, I felt that still wasn't manageable enough, you know. But you do have a very, very small uh, one here as well, which is just the sound yes. engine. This is a, the voice card or voice expander of the Solaris. And uh, it doubles the polyphony. So Solaris comes as a 10 voice instrument, uh, but that adds another 10 voices. You can have 20 voices or continually add the on after that. So it's almost like a, it's like a um, Solaris black box. Yes. Um, so how with the Solaris the with the box? How do you how do you adjust the parameters? Is it all CC? Well, or it's Sys all X? it's all SysX. Yeah, all 1,254 parameters. Quite a, quite a bit of work, but yes, anything you do from the front panels of either of these gets sent over there. And uh, if you're editing a sound on uh, here, it all gets sent over there, and then you can save it from there. And, and So all the sounds are stored on cards. They're not internal. That's what makes the Solaris a little different. I've, oftentimes people ask me, well, how many presets does it have? Well, on your CF, it's a compact flash card, old, old style. You can have, well, you can have, what is it, 128 banks of 128 sounds. I mean, it's crazy. And the, the cool thing about that is you can pull that card out and put it into any other Solaris, and now your Solaris is, is there. So you can actually transport stuff. Do so we have a new operating system coming out that has multi-mode? And we had a lot of requests over the years, of course. Uh, so you hit the multi-button and you increment through the parts and you can see that we have a four part system here. You can enable or disable from the front panel here. You make a voice assignment, volume, typical kinds of windowing, velocity keys, channels, transpose and so on. And uh, just to show you we have on part one the bass, whoops, sorry. And then the next, uh, I actually have this layered 
part two and part four are layered. And then on the top, whoops. On the top I have a lead sound. So, so how many how many splits and layers can you get across the whole uh, uh, the Well whole you have keyboard? four parts. Okay. So in this one I I I split it the bass on the bottom, the lead on the top, and then I layered two in the middle. Uh, but this is all a new system, and uh, it's it's pretty exciting to finally be able to do that for people who have all wanted it for years. Uh, other than that, uh, all of the sound generating stuff is the same. We can go back to... Well, of course, this is a, a well-known sound. And this is using something called the rotors. Everybody always asks me about what's a rotor. So I'd like to use this uh, as an explanation. And I'll, I'll go through that briefly. <clears throat> the rotor takes four inputs. We have four oscillators. And the oscillators are tuned. Uh, zero meaning... Uh, a root pitch, a fifth above, an octave above, and two octaves above. So as you move through the mixer, you'll hear, and they're very smoothly fading one to the other, which is controlled by the crossfade. So if I turn that off, you'll hear those four oscillators discreetly. And of course, if you speed that up, basically a quad uh, panner in a way but the, the kind of cool thing about that is that you can you can actually go into keyboard range okay so right up into audio range go into audio rate yes you can go up quite a bit and what happens here is even though the, the original wave shapes are all sine waves the different tunings in there and so on actually generate a new wave shape and you could use other than sine waves of course but it's just, it's just a different way to produce a raw material you know so is it, is it in some way kind of almost like uh, amplitude modulation but between because you're kind of got like crossfade modulation really uh yeah not not exactly amplitude modulation we do have ring mods that you know we have a whole section for amplitude modulation, actually, um, with a carrier and a modulator and several algorithms. Ring modulation being one of one of several, and you can modulate that and have all kinds of controls. A lot of people don't know that that we have ring modulation in here, and we, it's it's always interesting to me. It's a very deep instrument, and there's lots of functions, so. It takes a long time to exp explore it all, which is probably another reason of, to, for the longevity, to explain the longevity of the instrument. So um, is, is the, uh, the kind of uh, tabletop version and the rack uh, voice card uh, available now? No, not yet. Not uh, yet. Okay, I'm, and I'm uh, hoping within a couple of months. And uh, do you have a kind of final price on, on this? Yeah, the, the tabletop will be about $1,000 less. This is 4200 right now. So about uh, dollars, thirty-two hundred dollars. This I'm not sure yet. Uh, maybe another thousand less. Okay, John. Thank you very much. Well, thank you.